The Naughty Boy. There was once an old poet, a very good old poet. One evening, as he sat at home, there was dreadfully bad weather outside. The rain streamed down, but the old poet sat comfortably by his stove, where the fire was burning and the roasting apples were hissing. There won't be a dry thread left on the poor people who are out in this weather, said he, for he was a good old poet. Oh, open to me, I am quite cold and wet, said a little child outside, and he cried and knocked at the door while the rain streamed down and the wind made all the casements rattle. You poor little creature, said the poet, and he went to open the door. There stood a little boy. He was quite naked, and the water ran in streams from his long, fair curls. He was shivering with cold, and had he not been let in, he would certainly have perished in the bad weather. You poor little creature, said the poet, and took him by the hand. Come to me, and I will warm you. You shall have wine and an apple, for you are a pretty boy. And so he was. His eyes sparkled like two bright stars, and though the water ran down from his fair coal, they fell in beautiful ringlets. He looked like an angel child, but was white with cold and trembled all over. In his hand he carried a lovely bow, but it looked quite spoiled by the wet. All the colours in the beautiful arrows had been blurred together by the rain. The old poet sat down by the stove and took the little boy on his knees and pressed the water out of the long curls and warmed his hands in his own and heated sweet wine for him and then the boy recovered himself and his cheeks grew red and he jumped to the floor and danced round the old poet. You are a merry boy, said the old poet. What is your name? My name is Cupid, he replied. Don't you know me? There lies my bow. I shoot you with that, and you may believe me. See, now the weather is clearing up outside and the moon shines. But your bow is spoiled, said the old poet. That would be a pity, replied the little boy, and he took the bow and looked at it. Oh, it is quite dry and has suffered no damage. The string is quite stiff. I will try it. Then he bent it and laid an arrow across, aimed and shot the good old poet straight into the heart. Do you now see that my bow isn't was not spoiled, said he, and laughed out loud and ran away. What a naughty boy to shoot at the old poet in that way, who had let him into the warm room and been so kind to him and given him the best wine and the best apple. The good poet lay upon the floor and wept. He was really shot straight into the heart. Fie, he cried, what a naughty boy this Cupid is. I shall tell that to all good children so that they may take care and never play with him, for he will do them harm. All good children, girls and boys, to whom he told this, took heed of this naughty Cupid, but still he tricked them for he is very cunning. When the students come out from the lectures, he runs at their side with a book under his arm and has a black coat on. They cannot recognize him at all. And then they take his arm and fancy he is a student too, but he thrusts the arrow into their breasts. When the girls are being prepared for confirmation, he is also after them. Yes, he is always following people. He sits in the great chandelier in the theatre and burns brightly, so that people think he is a lamp, a lamp, and afterwards they see the error. He runs about in the palace garden and on the promenade. Yes, once he shot your father and your mother straight into the heart. Only ask them and you will hear what they say. Oh, he is a bad boy, this Cupid. You must never have anything to do with him. He is after everyone. Only think, 
Once he shot an arrow at his old grandmama, but that was a long time ago. The wound has indeed healed long since, but she will never forget it. Fee on that wicked Cupid, but now you know him and what a naughty boy he is.